This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Bingo, bingo, bingo. We're back at four o'clock. This is Hawaii, the state of clean energy, our flagship energy show every Wednesday at 4 p.m. And wow, we're entering into a new month. Okay, so we not only have a special guest next to me, Shana, um, but we also have a special co-host, Brian K. Aloha from Hawaii Energy. Brian, can you describe all the wonderful things that are going to happen on Hawaii State of Clean Energy this month? There's a lot going on this month. Uh, October is Energy Action Month. So as a result, we're going to be talking about a lot of different things. Today, we've got uh, Shana from our program and Kippen from Iolani Palace to talk about some of the events of the month, as well as some of the things that Iolani Palace did to be energy efficient and save money and save energy. And later in the month, we're going to get into co exciting things around codes and standards and things that people can do in their homes and businesses to save money. Exciting times. Yeah. Okay, this is going to be an interesting month because as you know, you're the first guy to know this, the cheapest kilowatt of all is the one you never use. <laughs> I've heard that somewhere heard before, that somewhere. yeah. <laughs> I may have uttered it a few times, too. <laughs> so introduce Shana now. So Shana Doy is our Marketing and Communications Manager at Hawaii Energy, and she's a rock star who's killing it across all of our, our MarCom efforts to really help get the word out on how people can make smart energy choices, save money, save energy. And one of the things that's coming up tomorrow is our, the second annual National Energy Efficiency Day. And there's some cool stuff happening in the state, so I'm not going to steal Shana's thunder and introduce oh, Shana. Shana. I feel it coming. Here. I feel it coming. <laughs> Can you tell us what's coming tomorrow? Yeah, so as Brian mentioned, tomorrow is National Energy Efficiency Day across the country. And Hawaii Energy is proud this year to have reached out to each of the four county mayors in our state. And each of them in their respective counties will be proclaiming tomorrow officially as Energy Efficiency Day in their county. Um, so last year we were able to do this on the state level, and this year we're doing it on the county level, and we're super excited to get them all on board, especially because Hawaii is definitely leading the charge for this Energy Efficiency Day campaign, and it's really awesome to have all of their support as well. Brian, did you tell me that Hawaii is the only state in the union where all the counties are buying in? Am I right about that? That is correct. You know, once again, we're on the map. Last year we were the first state as a state to proclaim it as Energy Efficiency Day. And then this year on the second annual, we're the first state to have all our counties buy into it. So it really just shows how clean energy is at the forefront here. And, and Hawaii is yeah. always a national leader. You better watch out. You're going to get calls from the media all over the country tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Broke here first, yeah, Jay. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so what shall I expect to see tomorrow, Shane? Is there going to be festivities, parades, people? <laughs> Oh, well, there won't be um, big parades or anything like that, but we will be doing um, our best to break the news to the public. We'll be on KHON tomorrow morning on uh, their morning show, Take Two, um, talking about what we just talked about here and hopefully encouraging folks to do their part in Energy Action Month. Um, and save energy and make smart energy choices. Um, later on in the month, we'll be putting together some really awesome things um, like our own event, uh, just celebrating energy efficiency right here in downtown Honolulu at Tamarind Park on the 18th. I'll be there. You will be. Yeah. Well, that's amazing to yeah. hear. Um, and then there are also a lot of other events that are not hosted by us um, happening throughout the month. So some technical trainings going on. Um, Kiko has their clean energy fair happening on the 7th. Um, so we're really excited to be a part of all of that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, what can I do, Shana, <laughs> in order to celebrate or at least join in the celebration of energy, let's see, energy efficiency day, mm -hmm. which is yes. tomorrow, and energy Action month. Action month. The action month. part is where yes, I'm going here. Yes. Well, where do we start? My goodness, <laughs> there's so many things. Um, what we're asking folks to do just on a national level, I guess one simple step you can take is take a pledge to just switch out one light bulb, um, upgrade it if you've got an old incandescent. We were talking about Thomas Edison earlier. Yeah. Um, we don't live in the My age hero, of incandescents yeah. anymore, unfortunately. <laughs> um, so if you could take the pledge and our viewers could take the pledge to just change one light bulb, um, that would mean a whole lot uh, across the country. Imagine that. Everybody change out one light bulb. What a difference two it would make. Yeah, two an LED. LED yeah. Or, um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Anything else? Well, there's so many different... My refrigerator, for yeah, example. Yeah, your refrigerator. <laughs> if, you've, if you've got an old refrigerator, um, you can trade that up to an ENERGY STAR model. Same with a lot of your appliances in your home. Ceiling fans, air conditioning, 
Um, you could get a solar water heater for your home if you're not, um, if you're running off an electric one right now. Um, and in your workplace, you know, there's just small things. Put timers on your um, on your electronics, shut down your computer every day, turn off those power strips. Um, all the things that we, you know, we love to tell people yeah. um, that make a difference. And if they want to learn more, they can always check us out more at hawaiienergy.com. Yeah. And they'll see their incentive programs because mm -hmm. I know you have incentive programs for a lot of the things you just named. Mm -hmm. So, Brian, how much of what Shane has said do you agree with? 100%. <laughs> it's just like our clean energy goal, 100%. Hey, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what you mentioned, and I think that's an important piece is that we have uh, incentives for pretty much everything mm -hmm. that, that Shana laid out. And in addition to that, um, you know, on our website, you can find a lot of interesting educational pieces, too, as well. And um, I, a lot of times for people, when they're in the moment of, of buying, let's say, a, uh, an appliance, they're not thinking about energy efficiency, mm -hmm. right? They're looking at the color, what's going to match in their home, um, does it have the space or what they want. And so if, if tomorrow, if everyone, if they go out and just think about energy for a little bit and get that Energy Star appliance, get the rebate. That's one of the things that people can do to make a difference. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, it's funny. We, you know, in the, the energy conversation in this state, we spend a lot of time talking about the grid, yeah. talk about storage, we talk about renewables, we talk about getting off fossil fuel, we talk about transportation. Mm -hmm. But we don't actually talk that much, not as much, about mm -hmm. energy efficiency. And I wonder if you could, you guys could help us put in perspective where the one stands vis-a-vis -vis the, the whole conversation. Yeah. How important, what percentage of my energy <laughs> thought process should I dedicate to <laughs> energy efficiency? Don't say 100%. I was just going <laughs> to say, that's where I was going. Back again, 100%. Yeah. Um, well, I put it this way. It's right, the latest report out from Hawaiian Electric, in terms of where we are across their utilities, is that we're at 26% renewable energy right now. Um, to put that in perspective, if we hadn't done the energy efficiency programs we have over the past seven years, as a state, we'd only be at 22%. So when you think of it from a percentage of where we're at right wise, you know, we're easily in the 10 to 20% part of the conversation of what needs to happen. But most importantly, energy efficiency is the most cost-effective resource. The LED light's going to cost you a lot less than a PV yeah. panel. So yeah. get your load down first and then put in the clean energy system. Mm -hmm. Let me add something, see if you agree with me, Shane. That it's not only co cost effective, cheaper cost to the consumer, mm -hmm. it's cheaper capital cost. You don't have to build a power plant mm. to be efficient. You don't have to spend millions and billions and whatever to, to do energy efficiency. All you have to do is hold back a mm -hmm. little bit. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So that I means it's, it's, not, it's not just your, your monthly bill, it's the cost to the whole community to the economy, mm -hmm. if you will. Yeah. In terms of energy efficiency, where do you think it plays against what I call the Puerto Rico effect? Mm -hmm. Because Puerto Rico is having a terrible time. Mm -hmm. And they were not particularly efficient. They didn't have, I think they had 2% of renewables on their grid. Uh, they did not have resilient systems mm -hmm. that could um, you know, operate against the storm. Um, we, we do have more renewables. We do have more resilient systems. We are thinking about it all day. And in that mix somewhere is energy efficiency. Where does it play in case we have a storm? Mm -hmm. It's not an easy question, mm -hmm. by the way. <laughs> I'm looking at Shana if she wants to take a stab at her, if she wants me to do it. I'd rather you do it. <laughs> <All right. laughs> well, I think if you rewind the clock even further back, Jay, if you look at what happened um, with Superstorm Sandy and how much devastation was wrought on the systems mm -hmm. there, uh, you know, as a state, they, they looked at how do we make our energy systems more resilient. They realized the backbone to everything is making sure that um, schools are up and running again and they have power so, so kids can go back to school, so parents can deal with the recovery efforts and things of that nature, right? right so right. Um, along, that, along those same lines, if you're going to be resilient, that means you probably have some, some form of self-generation and storage. And for you to size those systems, it's going to be really, like, as you just said, it's really expensive to buy those things. So if you can implement energy efficiency and bring the load down, then those systems don't have to be as expensive. They don't have to be as big. Um, and hopefully they can then be more resilient when storms happen. Because it, it's probably just a matter of time, unfortunately, that, that we're going to get hit by some type of storm. And hopefully yes, it's not going to be too bad, but we need to start preparing for that. Yeah, we do, and especially in our thought process. Yeah, you know, absolutely. because it's sort of like the same point is if you have to rebuild a, a damaged system, 
Uh, you don't have to rebuild that part of it, mm -hmm. which is energy efficiency. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, you get to close now. You get to say anything else that you want to say. And for this, I'm helping you with your own notes. <laughs> okay, Shana? Anything I want to say? Anything. Oh. You can say how much of what Brian said you agree with. <laughs> Well, I definitely agree with what Brian says. Obviously, he's my boss. I'm not going to disagree with him on a, <laughs> on a popular not on air, web series. <laughs> um, but I just want to reiterate for everyone, I think all of our viewers, that you know all of the points that you guys talked about today, that energy efficiency is the cheapest grid resource that we can buy. It doesn't take a lot. Anybody can participate. Um, like I said before, the pledge of just one light bulb, we can do that. You know, yeah. Anybody can do that. Yeah. Home, office, moms, parents, kids. It's better kids. to replace all the bulbs. Well, it is, but if you have to line. start somewhere, Yes, yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, and then just to reiterate that if, if you're stuck or you want to learn more, um, Hawaii Energy is always here to be that resource for you. Um, we have an awesome website, obviously, hawaiienergy.com. I'm not going to come on TV and not plug my own website. But, <laughs> um, but really, we, we do truly mean that. Um, we really want to be um, that trusted advisor for all of our you know business colleagues, everybody um, who's at home watching as well. Um, just if you're, if you're ever in the need to learn more about energy or you want to learn how, you can pay less every month. Um, that's what we're here for. So HawaiiEnergy.com. Hawaiienergy.com. I heard you say that. Yeah. And follow us on social media. Yeah, follow All right. us on social media. Okay. At My Hawaii Energy. <laughs> you know, Brian, she's great. I told you she was. <laughs> okay. I, I you got to trust me. you got to <laughs> trust me, Jay. We're going to take a short break. We're going to come back. We're going to talk to Kippen from uh, Ilani Palace and find out what's going on there in terms of energy. We'll be right back. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Living in this crazy world, so caught up in the confusion, nothing is making sense for me and you. Maybe we can find a way, there's got to be solution, how to make a brighter day. Good afternoon, my name is Howard Wig. I am the proud host of Code Green, a program on Think Tech Hawaii. We show at three o'clock in the afternoon every other Monday. My guests are specialists, both from here and the mainland on energy efficiency, which means you do more for less electricity and you're generally safer and more comfortable while you're keeping dollars in your pocket. I told you we'd come back, and indeed we did. This is Jay Fidel here on Think Tech with our flagship energy show, Hawaii, the State of Clean Energy. And my co-host is Brian K. Aloha of uh, Hawaii Energy, and he is now going to introduce Kippen, Kippen Vandichu. Did I get that right? The yeah. Albachu. Yeah. Vandichu would be make you Dutch, <laughs> not Dutch. <laughs> <laughs> not the no. Albachu, right. who's with Ilani Palace. Yeah. But, Brian, why don't, you, why don't you introduce? Sure. So uh, Kippen Dialbachu is the executive director of Iolani Palace. And one of the reasons why I was hoping to come on today, and I'm very happy he did, was we were just in the last segment talking a little bit about what you can do to save money and save energy and change out one light in your, in your place. Well, Kippen took that to the next level. He changed out every light at Iolani <laughs> Palace. So I'll let him tell a little, a little bit more about his story and, and what's yeah. happened there. Welcome yeah. to oh, the show, Kevin. Thank you. Thank yeah. you, Jay, and thank you, Brian. So what do you do over there? What do I do? What do you do? Uh, every Change lights. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I, I haven't done that. So basically, we uh, care for Iolani Palace and uh, manage all of the tours and access for people to come yeah. in. I've been on yeah. the tours. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, why does Iolani Palace care about light bulbs? 
Well, it's because King Kalakaua cared about the light bulb. He went and visited Thomas Edison in New York City and brought the technology of electricity and incandescent light bulbs back to Hawaii. Uh, so the palace, when it was built, had gas lanterns originally. And then when Kalakaua saw the new technology, he thought, you know what? This is something that we could use at Iolani Palace. So it's extremely fitting that today we are now switching to the new, newest type of bulb, the LED. Perfect. What took you so yeah. long? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it was the technology did, had to keep up, well, had to catch up to our exacting demands for a historic site. Uh -huh. So we could not put oh, in the first sure. LEDs that came out with this bluish white tint. Yeah, they yeah. were way too harsh. Yeah. yeah. And so we kept testing over the years. It took about five years. So we started back in 2012. We were using samples and none of them worked until just last year. We finally got... They finally brought the temperatures down, let's say. Ah, so it, it has a warm light orange bulb. glow, okay, yeah, okay. Of, the, of the bulb. You need that because it's a historical museum yes, uh, yes. effect. You know, you can't have right. it too bright. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Did you have to change infrastructure to do this? Did you have to change wiring? Did you have to change the, the canisters in which the, the bulbs are, are seated or anything like that? No, none of that. It was just simply twist off, twist on yeah. the new bulb. Okay, there's a yeah. rumor you had to do it all yourself. Is it true? <laughs> Step ladder, yeah. I can see. At it night, now. at night, right. I just <laughs> <laughs> What's Kevin doing now when he's changing bulbs? Changing bulbs, yeah. <laughs> Actually, I, I have to say, before the switch, our staff had to change bulbs every two weeks. They would burn out. Because you have a lot of bulbs. Because we had 692 bulbs we changed. Give, since, it, give or take. Oh, no, exactly, okay, 692. <laughs> and since the change out, we started back in September of last year, beginning. The, the, the new joke now is how many guys does it take to change a light bulb at Iolani Palace? Zero. Because none of the LED bulbs have burned out. None. Since September of last year. You heard it here on <laughs> How many guys does it take? None. It's fabulous. So how about the quality of lighting, the temperature? You know, is, is, did you achieve what you wanted to that way? Oh, exactly. Uh, we did want to increase the lighting in the palace because it was very dark before. So with the incandescence, we were using 15-watt bulbs. Uh, that is pretty dark. Uh, with the new LEDs, we were able to up that to about 65 watts, but still with a natural looking uh, light. And so when the tourists come in, they don't have to use the flash on their phones because they're not supposed to use flash. Right. But because it was so dark, a lot of people would try to sneak in doing a flash. Uh -huh. But now it's, it's well lit. So um, it's, yeah. it's a better experience for them. It's a better museum for them that way. It, it is better. They can see a lot more detail. And then for us on the other side is we can actually close the shutters for the sunlight yeah. because the sunlight is the most damaging on our objects. Yeah, yeah. And so with the higher uh, you light, you don't need the sunlight. You don't anymore. need the sunlight, yeah. yeah. Brilliant. It's, so think about this, yeah. right? It he doesn't have to change his light bulbs anymore. It provides a better experience. Yeah. It preserves everything in the palace. Yeah. yeah. And how much are you saving now a month because you did it? Oh, it was about uh, $1,200. A month? A month we're saving. On top wow. of that. Yeah. Wow. That's yeah, we have a, a big bill. That's a lot of yeah. bread over yeah. a year or five yeah. or ten. Oh, yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. So uh, you're sold on the deal then. You're not, oh, going, you're not going back. <laughs> <laughs> to gas lanterns. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. no. Yeah. Is there anything know. else you have to do with the palace now to you know, complete the project? Is it all done or is there more? No, the, the project is completely done. Yeah, we are finally finished. So, yeah. Brian, where does this fit in the larger picture? I mean, certainly it's iconic, right? right yeah. and, and it's a special place, and yeah. this is a special project, and you must love this project. Ab absolutely, because if Iolani Palace can find a way to change out the lights in, obviously, at the palace, there's no excuse for any other building not to be able to do it. Because yeah. as Kippen talked about it, that five-year process, and we were going hand-in-hand -hand with that yeah. together of, is this the right light, the right temperature? Does it provide you know the right setting for the curators? Whatever it may be, it was it was a challenging process, and so um, needing to preserve that architectural look and the museum look and all of those pieces is is not easy. So, if Iolani Palace can do it, you know, really everybody, everybody can, do can do it. it. Right? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Exactly. So um, you know. I hate to tell you this, but you're not the only museum in the state. Yeah, I know. Yeah, <laughs> we know. We can send you a note to that. <laughs> <laughs> what about other museums that are like Iolani Palace? I mean, nothing's mm -hmm. quite like Iolani <laughs> Palace, but, you know, the Mission House across the street, yeah. uh, Bishop Museum, what have you. Mm -hmm. There are other museums, and yeah. uh, my own experience is they could use more light, actually, because mm -hmm. uh, I, I like to see, because I'm getting old and I can't see straight. <laughs> anymore, so I like to see what I'm reading on the, on, you know, on the mm -hmm. exhibits. I like right. to see the, yeah. uh, you know, the artifacts there. 
Um, where are we? Where are we on that? Are we doing this in other places too? Mm. So we, one of the things that's really been exciting what's come out of this is we've been working a lot more with the um, Historical Preservation Society and actually mm. Ramsey Brown, who's on my mm. staff, is going to be presenting again excellent. in a couple Ramsey's of weeks. Excellent. Yeah, yeah he's yeah, awesome. Yeah. And, and that the case study that he's going to be presenting is, is Iolani Palace. Yeah. So um, we're hopeful that this can be kind of a catalyst for a lot of historic buildings as well to see that you can be energy efficient, you can make these smart energy choices and still operate a historic building and preserve what the ambiance and the feel of those facilities are, but save money and save energy in the yeah. process. Yeah. yeah, so can we say also that there are lessons you have learned in this project with 623? 92. Sorry. <laughs> As I said, I was getting older. The 692 bulbs. I mean, yeah. What have we learned in terms of dealing with not only an historic building, but any building uh, or any place that has 692 possibilities uh, mm. in, the, in the way we address this, yeah. in the way we get the staff aside from you to go out and do the job, the way that we determine the right temperature. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, one lesson, I suppose, would be call Brian. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> he and his staff are the best, yeah. <laughs> what else? Yeah. I mean, is a, you know, this is a profound experience, and we need to share with people, you know, what you've learned so they can follow the same path. It, there are so many benefits that we have noticed from switching to LEDs that, uh, you know, they keep coming up. One is the, the saving in staff time by not having to change bulbs. Because we have some bulbs that are pretty high up. And so it's now you take pay them less? <laughs> no, we have to pay more because the minimum wage law is going up, right, in January. <laughs> but it's also there's uh, much less heat. So the air conditioning system has to work less. So you save money on the air conditioning also. Exactly, well, yeah. That. And there's a better comfort level, especially in the galleries where we have a lot of spotlights. Yeah. Those have all been switched to LEDs. Oh, and sure. so now spotlights can be very hot. Yeah. Exactly, and now yeah. we don't have that problem. Yeah. So yeah. there are a lot of benefits. Yeah, to, this yeah. applies to every building, not only historic yeah. buildings, but every building. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So um, you, you yeah. could, whose idea was this anyway? Yeah? Oh, this is Kippen. This is you know he's following yeah. in the footsteps of Kalakaua. He decided I'm going to bring the LED to well, the Olani Palace. This is all Kalakaua's <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. idea. He started it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, you know this yeah. gesture, right? <laughs> Princess Kaolani, right? Kaolani, yes, okay. yes. The light lighting of Honolulu. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. But in all seriousness, Kippen once once he figured that out, he realized you know he was dealing with a higher energy bill and yes. what was yeah. what we were going to do, and that's. The first place that we looked at was the lighting because that was one of the, we thought would be one of the easiest ways to start saving money right away. And I think one of the lessons learned was it's it's really good to go through the process of putting in samples and getting staff and everyone involved in a decision in, in a place like Iolani Palace um, to feel comfortable with what's in there. So while it took a long time to get in, we didn't deal with anything on the back side of oh these lights aren't the right color, we don't like it, all of those yeah. types of complaints didn't happen, where if we hadn't gone through this process, I think we would deal, be dealing with it on the back end anyway. Correct, yeah, yeah. correct. Yeah. Go through, a, aside from the temperature issue, I really yeah. appeal, you know, because we have temperature issues around mm -hmm. in the studio, the same kind of yeah. thing, you have to hit the right temperature, and we have, you know, uh, we have, uh, what do you call it, gels over our yeah. lights <laughs> to make sure it's the right temperature. But aside from that, um, how do I make a choice about what kind of LED I, I'm gonna go buy? Should I go to one place or the other? Should I go mail order? How much should I expect to spend? Um, mm. You had to go through that, I guess. Mm? Oh, yeah. We, yeah. we had to find something that looked like an incandescent bulb. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, an right. LED that where you could see the filaments inside. Yeah. Right? And so that we had to wait till that developed. Because it thing. wasn't out there at the beginning. It, you had no. the twisty, the pretzel kind yeah, before. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you oh. waited. We, we waited, and finally it came out. And so yeah. we're using a Philips bulb. That yeah. mimics, and so it's, it's beautiful. The bulb is beautiful. Yeah, I have to come yeah. and look. Will you let me come and look? Yes, of course. Right. Yeah. Bring a camera and do that. <laughs> yeah. Quiet course. camera. No, yes. no noise. <laughs> and no light. So it take you, natural light. Everyone yeah. can take photos. Yeah, you post okay. on social media. <laughs> <laughs> so, Brian, yeah. you know, where, where does this all go? I mean, what's your advice, for example, to me as a homeowner or studio operator or building operator, whatever? I mean, how, how do I start the same project that Kippen started? How do I go down the road on that? Um, what are my considerations? Well, I think uh, 
one of the first things he did was again call Hawaii Energy. That was a big mm. step in the it's process. A very important move. Right, yeah. right. I mean, uh, you know, Kippen, Kippen's a smart guy, but he didn't know all the necessary yeah. steps on energy efficiency, and he shouldn't. And most most people don't need to know that. And that's what Hawaii Energy is there for. I mean, everyone pays for it as part of their electric bill. It's a service that we all need to take advantage of. And and that's the first part of the process. And when we when we worked with Kippen, we went through his facility and figured out where the different areas where they could save money. And like I said, we started with lighting, but you know, Kippen's also doing some things with his air conditioning system. Mm -hmm. um, so there's just a number for of efficiency. for efficiency yeah. as well. Yeah. 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 So you, I mean, you helped in a kind of general audit as well. I mean, I call it an energy efficiency audit as well as the bulbs. Because once you start looking at the bulbs, mm -hmm. you, you should look at everything. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And, and so that's, that's your approach. But, mm -hmm. uh, it, you know, that, that's for one iconic uh, you know, uh, project, but mm -hmm. what about other, if it, suppose I own the Davies building, yeah. okay, and I call you, what happens? Right. So what we usually try to do is we have a number of clean energy allies that are part of our program, and depending on what things you might be wanting to look into install, we can help connect uh, customers with those allies, and, and they can put together different proposals that will have the costs and the savings. And what we will do is we provide incentives on the project as well to help move it forward. So in the case of Kippen's project, we, we paid uh, almost $13,000 mm -hmm. in rebates to make the project look more cost-effective, yeah, yeah. and it really helped him move forward with some of the initial costs that he needed to get yeah. to, to invest. And so we would do the same thing on other projects as well as we figure out what the scope would be, what the opportunities are, and put together an incentive package to help make it happen. Yeah, so you're not only going to come and tell them, you know, what it means and how to do it and savings and benefits, you're going to actually help him in, in American money. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, and that did help you. That was, was that a, fa you probably already committed to the thing anyway, I figure, <laughs> but it did help you. It was a tipping point thing that you should also get incentives from Brian, no? Oh, of course, yeah, definitely, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 It sounded like a great experience together. It was, it was a great experience. And basically, the system, we will pay for the bulbs in three years, thanks to, you know, to the savings. It's a pretty short turnaround. Actually. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, that's with the rebate taken into account. So, yeah. so tell the people why they should come and see Elani Palace. What do you got going over there? <laughs> what do we don't have going? So <laughs> one, of the, one of the big changes, especially for people who haven't been recently, is we are doing replica gowns of what uh, the Ali'i wore. And these are now on display in the throne room. Mm. And they're about, I believe, three or four dresses from various queens oh, that are there wow. and people can see. One is the peacock gown that Kapil Lani wore. And again, these are replicas. We don't have the original, but they're as close to the original as possible. Yeah. Uh, and that is very exciting for a lot of people to yeah. see. Yeah. And that's under the LED lights, too, by the way. <laughs> see, beautifully. They <laughs> show better that way. Better that way, yeah. <laughs> the feathers look a little oh, different. Yes. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, Ilani Palace is a tremendous yeah. thing for Hawaii. It, it represents more than just a look back at the monarchy. Yeah. It represents, uh, you know, a, a kind of, uh, it's a historical turning point. Mm -hmm. People have different ideas about whether it was a good one or yeah. not. But it, it, it helps us, it's a lens through which mm -hmm. we can understand Hawaiian history and culture. Yes. And you're there. My yeah. God, I want your job. <laughs> <laughs> it was a fantastic job. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, yes. Jeff. Thank you, Jeff. Yeah, thanks, Kevin. So, Brian, yeah. can, you, can you talk about uh, the takeaway here and what we're going to do next time? Sure. So, uh, hopefully, everyone out there saw mm -hmm. some, heard some ideas of what they can do to, to save money and save energy. And again, energy efficiency is the, the first place to start to be able to save to reduce your energy bill and get the process started towards that 100% clean energy goal. <clears throat> As we look forward into the, to the upcoming show, I think on the 18th, we have Ramsey Brown, your, mm -hmm. your favorite. My favorite. He's going to come in well, and talk about... Aside from Shana. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't tell Shana. Um, he's going to come in and talk about not only the energy codes, which I think we've discussed at length before, but some of the things that we're doing in terms of standards as well to help raise the minimum bar of things so that our incentives can push things to even a higher efficiency yeah. and we can get to that 100% faster. Yeah, that's an interesting point, that efficiency is not static. No. The efficiency that we have today, that we, you know, we have at Iolani Palace is better than it was a year or two mm -hmm. or five years ago. And you're always looking for ways to make efficiency more efficient. You heard it here on Think Tech. Efficiency more efficient. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank I love you, it. Kevin. Thank you, Jay. Great to have you Thank here. You. Yeah. Brian, Thanks, thanks Jay. Yeah. Next week. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see you then. All right. Aloha. Okay. Aloha. Aloha.